hello and welcome back to my channel in this video we will see how we can create these kind of landscapes in blender it's surprisingly easy keep in mind that this is not done using geometry nodes instead it is completely shader created there is very little geometry involved in this method and it only works in cycles with the experimental feature set so without any further delay let's jump right into it so to start off let's add a plane and scale it by something like 12 this will be our ocean Let's add another plane and scale it by 4. This will be our mountains. This is the maximum geometry we require in this project. Everything else is shader based. Go over to the render properties and change the render engine to cycles and feature set to experimental and also change the device from CPU to GPU compute. Now let's create our environment. Go to the world properties and click on the yellow dot beside the color and select sky texture. I will adjust the settings a bit. These are the exact settings. Let's now create our ocean shader. Go over to the shading tab and add a new material. Delete the principal node and add in a glass shader. Let's make it blue and connect it to the material output. Set the roughness to something like 0.125. Now add a bump node and set its strength to something very low like 0.075 and connect it to the normal. Add a noise texture and connect the color to height and set the scale to 37 and set the roughness to 0. Select the noise texture and press Ctrl plus T to add a texture coordinate and mapping node. If it does not work for you, enable the node wrangler add-on. Change the connection path from generated to UV through vector. That's our ocean shader. Now to the UV editing tab and scale the UV by something like 50. It depends on the scale of your scene. To give the ocean more depth, let's add in a cube and scale it as big as the ocean plane. Make sure the cube is not above the ocean plane. Create a new material and delete the principal node. And add in a principal volume node. Connect it to the material output and decrease the density to something like 0.060 and change the color to blue. Now our ocean has a bit more depth. Now let's create our main subject, the mountains. It's pretty easy. Select the mountain plane and add in a subdivision modifier and enable adaptive subdivision. This is the most important part for this scene. I will tell the reason later. Let's first make the material. Create a new shader for the mountains. Add in a displacement node and connect it to the displacement output. Under the settings, change the displacement from bump only to displacement and bump. Add in a noise texture and increase the detail to 50. This noise texture will determine the valleys and mountains of our scene. Select the noise texture and press Ctrl plus T to add a texture coordinate and mapping node. We can change the location and rotation in the mapping node for different mountainscapes. I like to call it the seed. Let's change the color of our plane to something like yellow to make it actually look like mountains. This is the exact hex code. Now this is a basic mountain material and we can build a lot more on this. Let's now add those red layers that you saw in the thumbnail. Add in a mix shader between the principal node and the material output node. Duplicate the principal node and connect it to the mix shader. I will set the upper principal node to red. Now let's determine the amount of red and yellow on our mountains. Add in a color ramp and connect it to the factor slot of the mix shader. Set the color ramp to constant and adjust it accordingly. Set the white marker to a little below 0.5. Add in a noise texture and connect the color slot to the factor slot. This node will help us make the thickness of layers random. Set the scale to 260 and detail to 12.5. Also set the distortion to 1.5. Add a separate XYZ node and connect the Z to vector. Add in a mapping node and connect vector to vector. Add in a texture coordinate node and connect object to vector. 
Now if we go into the side view, the lines are completely straight and continuous even if it is on another mountain. To fix this, duplicate the separate XYZ node and connect the Z to the location of the mapping node. Add in another noise texture and connect the factor to vector. This noise texture will help us control the ups and downs of the layers and make it discontinuous. Set the scale to 0.26 and the detail to 15 and the distortion to 3.8. And this is our complete mountain shader. Now you can change the location for a different mountain scape. You can even rotate it, scale it or squish it. You can change the color of the mountains for a different look and feel. With some changes you can swap the principal nodes for the color of the mountains with images. All in all, it's expandable in a lot of different ways. Now let me tell you why adaptive subdivision is the key part to this node setup. The thing about adaptive subdivision is that it depends on the distance between the viewing point and the object. So the farther the object, the less details it will have, but it is actually useful. As details on objects far away from the viewing point is not that much visible. The farther the object, the smaller number of pixels it covers on the image and lesser details can be seen, even if it has more details that can't be seen. Adaptive subdivision works when you give it an input of a certain type of detail map. It can be a noise texture in the shader editor or clouds in the displacement modifier. Also the mountains don't appear when adaptive subdivision is off. It's something that I found accidentally. Like for our mountains, we can go far away from it in the solid view and then go closer towards the mountains in the rendered view. It barely has any details, but go to the solid view and again to the rendered view and now it has a large number of details. Now if you want to recreate the camera settings in the thumbnail, this is the camera location and rotation. I also have a focus object, this is its position and these are the camera settings. And that's our mountains. We can now extend this material in different ways. Instead of the red layered mountain shader, we can make it completely white for glaciers or snow filled mountains. You can change the colors or the pattern of textures for creating an alien environment. Basically, it's expandable in a lot of ways. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and goodbye.